The problem with group presentations is that they have a very predictable tone. Someone starts off the presentation and then one by one, the other members of the group come on to present their areas of expertise. And we wonder why so many group presentations are just boring. And it's because of this predictable pattern of people coming on one after the other, like a school of talent show. But here's the thing, the one simple thing that we can do to make our group presentations more exciting is to add a creative spin to them. Now, I know that that's a very wide term. And the next question is, how do we go about adding that creative spin? So let's explore a few ideas. Number one, skits. Acting out small skits are a great way to make a group presentation more exciting. And it's one of the benefits that group presentations have over just one person. Now, many of us get very awkward while doing skits because we might feel that we have to be good at acting or we have to be funny or we have to do things a certain way. But skits, at least for the purpose of group presentations, do not have to be that complicated. We don't really need acting skills. We don't have to make the audience laugh. It's just about communicating certain ideas in a different manner. For example, I was attending this event where a group had to present a very controversial idea. Now, they could have done the standard format where one person comes on the stage and they introduce the idea. Then another person comes and talks about the benefits and one person addresses all the cons or everything that goes against that idea, which is fine, but again, same old thing. Instead, there were six of them in the group and they acted out a skit representing the show Shark Tank. If you don't know what Shark Tank is, it's basically a show where entrepreneurs come to pitch their startup ideas or existing businesses to a bunch of investors. And these investors are called sharks. Essentially, from the six members, three of them played these shark investors and the other three played the entrepreneurs. And the way they made the skit is that the entrepreneurs would pitch the idea to make it sound really good. And the sharks would keep on questioning it, being skeptical about it, like how the audience would be. And that back and forth in a creative setting like Shark Tank made the entire presentation so much easier to consume. And it's something that I still remember to this day. So that's number one, skits. Number two is using props. Props have been used for a long time in speeches to open them, to close them, and even in the middle to make them a lot more intriguing. They've been a staple for public speaking. But the example I want to share with you is about this one presentation, which I can never forget. Essentially, the group had laid out a table in front of the stage and they had put five boxes on that table. Each box had an object inside of it and each object represented an idea that they wanted to convey in their presentation. So five boxes for five members. Each time a member would come on stage, he or she would lift up one of the boxes, pick up a prop and then go on talking about their idea. Very minimal PowerPoint slides. And yes, while this still follows the format of people coming on one after the other, it still created so much more intrigue in the minds of the audience. Because we were all wondering, what is the next prop going to be? And the props also helped us remember the ideas a lot better. Because as humans, we consume and remember information that is more visual in nature. I wish I had videos of all these examples, but to see this in action, there's a TED talk by this lady known as Caroline Goiter. Now, this isn't a group presentation, but she does something similar. She basically has a chest full of drawers and as she keeps opening each drawer, there's a small prop inside which represents an idea that she wants to communicate. So that's number two, props. Number three is the placement shift. This is a very high effort thing to do and it's mainly applicable to large venues. But it basically means that we don't have to use the stage alone. If you've been to certain seminars, these groups have rehearsed their presentation so much that they almost treat it like a dance. For instance, one person or two people stand on the stage and the rest of the members of the group are spread across the audience. And instead of talking one by one, the entire presentation is interspersed. So the person on the stage says one line, then one person from behind the audience says another line, one person from the other side says another line, and so on and so forth. And yes, this requires a lot of practice and it depends on what your topic is and what the venue is like. But doing this type of presentation keeps it highly, highly engaging because information is being spewed out from two different directions. And if there's one thing that we need to know about audience engagement, it's that when we break patterns, the audience is more hooked. 
and the idea of having multiple members situated at different parts of the auditorium or venue and not knowing who's going to speak when keeps us much more on our toes because there's such a lack of monotony. And lastly, we can use the power of multimedia. Because we have a group, we have more than just one person, we can spend more time in the preparation of the presentation by, for instance, making a small video or creating an auditory experience. For instance, back in college, my group and I had created a documentary or a mockumentary style video, which neatly and in a very satirical way represented the point that we wanted to communicate. Doing things like this is possible when you're giving a single presentation as well, but when you're in a group, it's just easier because the workload is split. Now, while putting creative spins on presentations are important, if we are forced to do the normal presentation, or even if we are trying to take on any of these different routes, if we need to introduce certain members of the group, there's a video that we made on that, which I highly recommend you check out because introductions, when not done correctly, can sometimes hamper the credibility of the entire group. Highly recommend you check out this video right here.